Hey there! So today I'm preparing for a long trip. It will be a two week trip to Italy and uh, in the this is part of the whole green mobility project of the Global Impact Institute. So we will talk to several hotels uh, about you know the change to sustainable tourism and green mobility of course with a Tesla. And let me just show you the first uh, trip. So Tomorrow the trip uh, goes from Prague, and you see here, all the way first to Munich. That will be in uh, Bruntal, the supercharger, and then we go into the mountains. And the first stop will be here in Arco, north of the Lago di Garda. And then later we will have another appointment down here, south of Florence. And then we have to go to Bologna to the university. And then we have to go somewhere here to a very old city, Comacchio, at the Adria. And then from there we have to go to Austria and back to Prague. But tomorrow all is about this. This is a trip of 800 kilometers and we will aim to do it in two legs. One first to Munich and then from there to Arco. So let's see how that goes tomorrow. For, for that trip we charge up to some 95% just to be on the safe side, but normally we should use only 80-85%. Okay, without further ado, let's see how that goes tomorrow. See you then. Bye. Yeah, and then we started off this is already shortly behind Prague in absolutely magnificent weather and well nearly perfect driving conditions it was about 26 degrees or so as you can see completely blue sky totally nice conditions and at that point very little traffic but that was also like 7:30 or so and here I wanted to show you a little bit the elevation profile of the whole trip, at least for the first part here until entering Germany. And you can see that basically from Prague onwards, it's constantly going uphill. And Prague is very low. It's under 150 meters of height. And the peak you will see later of this leg was 1,369 meters at the Brenner Pass. So quite a steep uphill drive. Yeah, and here on the road, I still followed my original plan to stay at 120 kilometers per hour. That's why you also see more cars overtaking because in the Czech Republic, you have a speed limit of 130 and some people even go a little bit quicker. But that was the plan in order to do this one stop strategy I mentioned in the beginning, only stopping shortly after Munich. But little did I know how this would develop and that in a few minutes uh, a new request would come up.
Yeah, because at this stage of the trip, like a good hour into the trip, my girlfriend announced that she needed a coffee. And um, well, granted, we didn't have any breakfast before we left. So I then decided that that would be an opportunity to change strategy since we were going uphill anyway um, through um, that part of the Czech Republic. We then, when we now entered Germany, we decided that on that stretch, you can go as quick as you want to. So instead of staying with 120 kilometers per hour, I switched to a strategy of as fast as possible. And we were practically never, I think, under 150, 160, where it was allowed, of course, and even up to 200 on quite some stretch. So that, of course, would eat into the battery anyway, but since we stopped, or we planned now to stop, didn't matter. That meant to go for a two-stop strategy. And um, in the end, time-wise, that would not matter much because we covered a lot more kilometers, of course, at the high speed than we would normally have done at lower speeds. But on the other hand, it also meant that we had to get out at Regensburg. Still, it was a nice opportunity to see how fast one can travel comfortably. Uh, it was quite interesting because my girlfriend really said that even at 180, 190, 200, the car would be pretty quiet. You know, many people say, oh, Tesla is loud. I, I don't see that. And we have the 19 inch wheels. So we then decided around Regensburg, there's a supercharger. So we went out there. I will not show you then um, all the stop around the supercharger. That's a bit useless. But we just did some upping there around 58 kilowatt hours. It took only 35 minutes or so. We barely had time to walk the dog and have a breakfast. Actually, I had to run out um, to make sure that we would not be on overtime and to pay penalty. So <laughs> that's always a problem with Tesla charging too fast. But that meant then, okay, that we would go around Munich and you will see later why that was in the end a very clever idea. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take. I've got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take. I've got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up
yeah and then about an hour later we entered the circle of hell around munich which is whichever way you go whatever time you go usually just a nightmare and in the beginning it didn't look that bad but factually in the end it was pretty bad it could have been a lot worse but we easily lost about 40 45 minutes overall around munich and a bit south of munich because of all this traffic and nearly it was nearly stop and go and that in the end proved that our decision <laughs> to have a coffee break earlier and to do the charging there was clever because while this of course would have made it even easier to reach the 400 kilometer stop um, south of Munich easily in terms of battery life because going so slow would have meant I use even a lot less on the other hand would have meant that we had would have done a very very long first leg something like I don't know five and a half hours or so and that would have been simply too much also for the dog particularly because he also needs to stretch a little bit driving of course in the long run is also stressful for a dog so in the end that was a good decision for us and that just simply meant that we could you know, just you know go on autopilot and just cruise around Munich hope for the best and then plan for having a final stop for charging and that would have been that would have been on the Brenner Pass because from there it always goes just down hill so you normally can expect to recoup a little bit but also it was the right kind of distance to say then the battery would be low enough that it's worthwhile doing it but on the other hand I also did not need much because the hotel had a charger and I just wanted to play it safe to say yeah I charge a little bit more than absolutely needed by Tesla just in case the charger doesn't work so that I don't have the trouble at the hotel um, with that hotel it was an unnecessary precaution but later on the trip uh, in Tuscany that was a very you know necessary precaution to take Yeah, and then we finally entered Austria. And as always, I don't know, the moment you enter Austria or so other countries, it is more relaxed driving. 
I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel that people are less pushy or something than in Germany. In any case, what is pretty helpful is that on that trip, there's always speed limit. Not only the general one, but they often go down to only 100 or something. So, uh, plus, of course, you have a lot of construction sites. So basically, you're just cruising along. And that, of course, also helps the consumption, especially considering that there you have the steepest part of uh, you know, uphill driving, as I will show a little bit later. But overall, the highways were not really crowded down there. And driving at these considerably lower speeds was just very relaxing. Probably also pretty safe because all these hours in traffic jams um, around Munich, of course, also require quite some attention and make you a little bit more tired. So that was all good. And then now uh, let's see how it was with the charging later on. So this was shortly before reaching the charging station at the top of the pass, which is, by the way, at um, the highest point. So I show you here the elevation profile. This is uh, still Munich, and then you enter Austria, and then you can see it goes firstly still mildly upwards, and then the last kilometers are, well, considerably steep. So that also means, of course, a bit more consumption there. And then we finally reach the top point, which is at 1,369, I think, meters of height. And that was then the moment to leave and go for the superchargers. At this point, we knew that from that on, it's really only downhill to uh, down into Italy. And uh, maybe a funny point on the side, when I entered the superchargers, by the way, you also have hyperchargers for other cars on the other side. There was a very weird looking Tesla, which was actually, of course, a Skoda Fabia from Italy, who I don't know why he parked there, because there was a lot of other, were a lot of other options. Yeah, and at the Brenner charger, I also met two people who were traveling in a next move car so i use this opportunity to say hello to next move you are all over europe i think that that was pretty cool nice car by the way and that stop was even faster we had i don't know 15 minutes or so 33 kilowatt hours charged and then it went all downhill. Although, since we were, I think, you know, in a quite full car with all the luggage for the business trip for two weeks, it 
was not recuperating as much as I thought. Maybe also because the highway is not that steep, the slope is mild. So it's not really recuperating. It was in very low kind of decimals, like 50, 60, 70 watt hours per kilometer. But it was not recuperating, interesting. And you can see here everywhere it's 110. And Italy also, people always claim that it's so stressful to drive in Italy. I think, yeah, it's a bit more stressful if you are in Rome, maybe also Milano, Firenze, a little bit the bigger cities. But on the highways and in the countryside, it's all very relaxed. And most people stick to the speed limits, as, as I experienced, at least on the highways. Otherwise, on the country roads, it often seems more like a suggestion. Most people think that uh, there is not a big difference between country roads and highways. And also, you see here also the rails on the left side. And later in Italy, we very often have these concrete barriers. And it makes the highways feel narrower. And I think this also in a certain way helps because it gives you uh, less of the feeling that you have a, you know, a wide prairie to uh, ride over. It's more of a kind of a narrow uh, tunnel you're in. And that disciplines you probably a little bit more. And on that leg, I still saw a couple of Teslas and other EVs, less others. You know. In general, then, when you enter Italy, my feeling was that the percentage of EVs sharply dropped, especially in comparison to Austria and also Germany. But in any case, this is also how the landscape then changes. And, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. By then, the temperature was already pretty high. Uh, it was beyond 30, I think 33 or something outside. So the highway was something around 50 degrees probably. But it started to be already very beautiful. Looking. And then finally, after many, many, many hours of driving, we arrived 
in Arco, that is a small city at the northern shore of Lago di Garda. And funny enough, many people think that it is far away from the lake um, other than Riva di Garda. So it's usually just for bikers and um, mountain climbers and people like that. So the, the people who want to go to the shore or swim or something simply do not choose to stay in Arco, which is, to my, uh, in my opinion, a huge mistake, but very good for us, because it simply means that there are a lot less people hanging around. You just have the city much more to yourself. And it's really a nice, beautiful, quiet city, very little traffic. And then at the very end of the trip, we just turned right on the last small road and finally there it was our hotel and i will do a video on this hotel so we will see what you think about that the project is part of the green mobility project of the global impact institute and it might be interesting for you to follow that on the website globalimpactinstitute.eu Otherwise, I hope you liked it, then please give it a like. And if you subscribe, I will be eternally grateful to you. Have a good day.